What's up, peoples? Hola. We back. We are back. Huh? Ooh. Huh? Oh, wow. Huh? Now. Uh, this is Bass Now Radio. This is Bass Now Radio. I'm Andrew. I am Lewis. And this podcast is put in. But the fine folks of Biz Bates. Biz Bouts. Biz Bouts. At it again. And uh, if you want to get some percentages off your next order. How would they do that? 10 percentages off. 10 percentages off. With the code VAST now. Nice. Yeah. That's the code. <laughs> and this Deep is, Apparel this right is, here. Yeah. Deep yeah. Apparel, they got Whoop. good stuff. Uh, if you want 20 <laughs> somethings off your order. Percentages. Percentages. Uh, you're going to use the code SUNRISE20 at checkout. That was one of the more interesting intros we've ever done. Oh, absolutely. We always try to keep it fresh here. <laughs> It's fresh, all right. <laughs> Never to be duplicated. Also, you like my Grogu glass that I'm. Oh, I didn't with. see that. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. you you shouldn't be drinking out of that as a fan who has not watched the book of Boba Fett. I will watch it once I finish what I what I'm watching. Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! Um, well, well, we got some things to talk about, and then we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> draft the baseball team. Yes. In honor of the Elite Series starting up tomorrow. Tomorrow. When was pod, 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 well, podcast No, drop? today, actually, because I'll drop it tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, today the Elite Series starts. And uh, we're going to draft a baseball team based around the Elite Series members. Yes. And uh, before there's, we get into that. There's some other tournament going on, but we don't acknowledge it. Yes, yes. Yeah, what is that? Um we're going to talk about the Bass Bass College Series in Florida. Yes. Florida. A little delayed. I just came but from. we're going to talk about it. I just came from Florida. How was that? Um, cold. Yeah. It was cloudy three out of the five days. So I think that they need to change their name from the Sunshine State to Cloudy State. I, I think most professional anglers would agree with you right now. It seems um, like. And, and college. It's been nothing but cold there. But it did get warmer. And uh, the fish moved on the beds because you can see. You saw them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had, like the number of beds literally quadrupled yeah. the time I was there. Yeah. Um, no one can really fish the Disney pond. So there was like a four and a five and a six. And then there was another five and a four. And it was all like, oh, mm. I wish I could catch those. E. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can catch them if you want to go to Disney. You got to pay. And pay $500 for a guide. Right. Um, but you can catch them. Uh Let's see what else is going on. Yeah, look, yeah, that's it. So Florida, I'm back from good. Florida, yeah, nice, it was good. Got some sun, nice. Rode some rides, nice. Spent some money on Star Wars stuff, yes. Because that's how that. that's how everything good. Although this did not come from Disney, I already had this. There you go, perfect. Uh but yes, let's talk about. Yeah, we're a little delayed on it, but I'm excited to talk about it. And uh, we're both. I mean, let's be honest, we're both incredibly busy at the moment um mm, yeah one might say hopefully that. things calm down they should yes yeah, so in the next three weeks i should be back to and yeah some kind of normal and the reason why it's okay for us to be so late is because we have what almost a, a two-month gap in between college tournaments yes there's a huge gap yeah which is good because our jerseys are, have not been ordered nice so <laughs> Nice. The UNC Charlotte team will be in jerseys for the next tournament, thanks to the big gap. Yeah. Thank you, Bassmaster, for that gap that made my life a lot easier. Um, yeah, it went interestingly. I mean, I, I can speak. I was there. Yeah. Um, before we get into X's and O's and who did what. Yeah. And uh, who qualified and who did not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh he's feeling stabby already i'd like to talk a little bit about how the tournament went over yeah um interesting <laughs> would be the word that's that's how you guys that, that would hey, be the word um i'd be i'd be very interested if you if you were at the tournament your college guy please let me know what you thought of it um i thought given the circumstances with you know bass handing over hank to glenn bunch of different hank wasn't able to make it he had covid so it's kind of a big hoopla Mess. yeah a little bit um but i i thought given the circumstances they did a good enough job um i will say one thing i genuinely miss and i really hope comes back is 
pre-tournament briefings. I mean, it sounds ridiculous because it's kind of a pain to sit through that meeting. But, like, like, trust me, in the moment, I feel like we all complain about those meetings. Like, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, why, didn't we, why didn't they have them? Because they had right. one in Kentucky. Right. And we had one in Saginaw. And at Smith, we had one. So, like, originally it was, like, a COVID thing. Like, you get the video, which yeah. is fine. You know, COVID, the whole nine. And then last year we went somewhat back to normal with actual meetings. Yeah. And here we are this year, first tournament, no actual meeting. I don't know if that was, like, a um, a bass thing because the handover or all that or um, if it's going to be no- back to, quote, unquote, normal for Norman. Um, but that, I, it's, I don't know, it's just, like, a part of it that I feel like you miss. A little bit. Yeah. You get to, you know, see everybody, hang out a little bit. Listen to the doc talk. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of, of little all that. So I missed some of that. I mean, they did have the on-site registration, all that. I thought the way that they went about the whole weightless ordeal was as good as they could have. <laughs> um, given how wild everything was leading up, I think they did a good job at the tournament okay. of lining everything up. Um, as far as getting who's in and having a board showing who's number one on the wait list and all that. So I thought they did a good job with that. Um, weigh-ins were normal to, for the most part. Um, anything else? I, there was something else that I had, I had on my brain. How was the fishing? So we'll get there. Um, <laughs> I got something. Yeah. The pre-tournament walk around and get free stuff was not what it was and look i'm not gonna sit here and bash bass for this because i get it sponsors change carhartt's gone now now it's strike king but it was a little weird like we got like you know we got some hats some some cool discounts from spro and some other companies and that was great and all but i was like well this is the strike king college series now i thought there might be a, Wasn't anything give, me a, give me a strike king sticker you know <laughs> Like, let's, let's see something. And what happened was, is after the day one weigh in, there was like a Strike King tent. Uh-huh. And you can go and get like a spool line and a sticker, which was fine. But like, why wasn't that just at the walker? Is it weird that I don't, that I didn't even know Strike King made line? Yes. It's been about a year now. Oh. But it's okay. So it's relatively new. It's not like Two I years missed now. it. It's Three not like I've like completely been. Hey, no. Hey, over here, I'm Seagar sponsor. <laughs> no, I don't, you haven't. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't walk know. around Bass I, Pro anymore. So you know, I personally haven't even tried it, so I couldn't even speak on it. But um, but yeah, no, I, I thought it would have been cool, like or just normal to have it at the something the walk yeah. around. Yeah. Like it's great you guys had it there. Maybe they're like late or something. That's what I kind of figured. Yeah. So I don't know. That I was, mean, it kind of seemed like that deal came together like relatively close to that. It definitely did. Yeah, so. it definitely did. It was just an interesting things seemed a little like I, I feel like they did a good job for things being all over the place, but at the same time, like I'm looking forward to a little bit tighter of a ship for Norman. For Norman. Yeah. Hopefully things will be back on the uh the old rails. Yeah. To some extent. Yeah, for sure. So So I think we owe a huge congratulations to not just the top, but the top two. Yeah, the top two teams kind of in this tournament. It was the Messer brothers from Kentucky Christian and Jenkins and McKenzie McKenzie from Emmanuel. Yeah. And I, would they, they, the two of them, what, what was the, the 61 13 and for the Messers and 60 11. All right. So they were separated by a pound. What did the Emmanuel guys beat third by? Like 13, 13 pounds, pounds, right? Pounds. That is absurd. Yeah. That is absurd. Well, I mean, we did say it. I mean. That was the one thing I remember from the podcast. Holy The last crap. podcast that we were very spot on about. What's that? We said that two or three guys were going to blow it out of the water. Yeah. And no one was going to come close. And we were correct about that. We were not right about the weight <laughs> that they were going to do that by, but we were correct about them doing that. So, yeah. Um. And I genuinely down the board was impressed with how well the guys caught him. Very impressed. I did not foresee the weights being as high as they were. Um, yeah, for reference, you had said 
45 pounds were gonna, was going to win. I said 44, and 45 pounds was fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so we're not terribly off. It's just 2.5 we teams just killed it, destroyed the field. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, the Messers had 36 and a half pounds day two. Mm hmm. That is absurd. Like, you're fishing a different lake than the rest of the field at that point. Yeah. And then the guys from Emmanuel. She could have been. The smallest, <laughs> yeah. The smallest of their two bags was what, 29 and a half? I don't know, because I'm only looking at day two. What'd they have day two? Should have been 29 something. 29 11. Yeah. 29 11 was their smallest of two bags. What? Just, just mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I would venture to say on the last maybe two to three years, the Harris chain is the number one fishery in Florida. Really? I would say. That's a hot take. I like that. I would say. I mean, it's it, over like farm pond or <laughs> like those guys. No, I'm talking about tournament lakes. Tournament lakes. Okay. I think it's the second best say, tournament. Damn, you got to take, take it over those ponds down there. <laughs> I think it's the second best 150 boat plus tournament fishery in Florida. 100%. I think it's the best. I might have just said second best. I meant the best. <laughs> I mean, it is putting out. I mean, you saw these guys this past week on Toho for the Open, and they struggled. Yeah. Under not the same, but similar conditions. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, congratulations to them for winning. Yeah, hell of a job, guys. Uh, for the... So that's the talk about Florida. Cut line. Um, on to 25th. our baseball drafts. <laughs> 25th place. Uh -uh. And uh, three ounces uh, away. <laughs> 25th place was... Uh, we were quite wrong about. That was the cut line. Yeah, we were really off. We were really off about the cut. Which was thirty one ten, and uh, so sixteen and a half pound, sixteen pounds a day. Yep, and uh, let's see, you had twenty seven pounds, I had twenty three pounds, so I was almost ten pounds off. Yeah, I mean, I said it; I was going to be either really right or really wrong, and I was really wrong. So <clears throat> tough. Yeah. Um, and that uh, that final spot there that uh, that belongs to Harmon Moran and Bailey Blesser from McKendry University. Um, congrats, guys! Nice job, guys! You put just a little bit more water on the bag than some people. I wonder who. <laughs> uh, so talk about the fishing. You were there. I wasn't. Yeah, for those who don't know what I'm, what we're, why I'm acting weird, um, I, Michael and I finished in 26th. Yeah, yeah, a mere three ounces back. <laughs> <sighs> so here, I'll just tell y'all. We'll get into the the X's and O's in a second, and we won't get crazy deep, but um. Day one, we had what four? I think we had fourteen nine, four, mm -hmm. just over fourteen and a half pounds. And I thought fourteen pounds a day, fourteen fourteen to fourteen and a half pounds a I day. Know, that's what we were saying. Was gonna do it. So you were like, I was like, Michael, we've got fifteen pounds. Like, what's you know, we're we're gonna be in okay shape going in tomorrow. We were in fiftieth place going into day two, but I knew Florida weights dropped. And at the time, the cut weight was right at 17 pounds. I said, okay, if we average 16 a day and catch a 17 tomorrow, I was like, I think we're pretty safely in. I was mm -hmm. like, I think if we catch like 15 and a half, we got a chance. I was like, if we catch 17, we're good. Yeah. We went out and caught 17. <laughs> exactly what she needed to do. <laughs> we're in. We're in, though. <laughs> You missed it. Well, actually, you didn't have exactly 17. You had 16, 14, 16, 14. So yeah. maybe if you had 17, one, no, 17, two, 17, two, you need 17, two, because yeah. we would have had to beat him by an ounce because their bigger of the two days was bigger, was bigger. Okay. 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 
Yeah, we were consistent. Yeah, consistency. It's UNC. Yeah. That's what UNCC stands for. UNC consistency. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, no, but it, it was an interesting. It was definitely an interesting week. Um, I'd plan to go down there and fully commit to Griffin, mm-hmm. and I'd say that's about exactly what we did. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd plan to try and find thirteen to fifteen pounds a day out of offshore grass that's exactly what we did <laughs> uh, stuck to your plan consistency yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i it i just was unaware of how well the guys would catch them and i guess uh the shell bite was a little bit at least on a lake like dora which is where them guys won i mean i think the shell bite and a combination of us we we went so we fished Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yeah. And going into the first day of the tournament, the biggest bass we had caught was three and a half pounder. So when you talk about Florida, it's not, that's that not the recipe. That's not the, that's not the winning. That may be on Cumberland. Yeah. So I felt like, but, but the problem was I felt like that 14 and 15 a day, which is, what we really felt like we would catch because we were catching a lot of two and a half to three and a half pound fish. I felt like that would do it. Mm -hmm. And we didn't need the big bite. We could just live off of consistency. Yeah. And after day one, when we had our 14 and a half with straight three and a quarter or two and a half to three and a half, I said, we're looking good. Didn't have the big bite. We caught them all out of one day one. I had one fish. I'll backtrack. I found one fish two days before the tournament started in my little bit of shallow looking that I thought was a 10. I pulled up on it first thing. She wasn't there. Went straight to the grass, fished one grass patch for six and a half hours. Milked it for everything it was worth. Caught 14 and a half. Realized day two, we needed more. And I thought more were coming. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the spot that it was right at the mouth of a canal. So if there were fish in the canal, they would pull out off of it, and if there were fish moving up, they would go there before they went in. Yeah. So I felt like we were in a great little area. It did not get better. It really slowed down. But something that happened day two was I got a four-and-a-half-pound bite out of that grass, and I got a three-and-a-half-pound bite out of that grass. Mm-hmm. Two higher – one, the first four-pounder we caught all week, and two, um, the highest quality that we had been catching – the only problem is the three that we had to go with it were babies. Yeah. So with about an hour left to fish on day two, I said the only way we're going to catch a good bag is with the big bite that we have not gotten in 15 hours of fishing here. I said, or 12 hours. And I said, let's, I said, let's pull up in a canal that I caught a four and a half in when I was here two years ago. Yeah. Went down the canal, caught 30 fish in it. Last cast of the day, I caught a six pounder. We waited in seven, seventeen. What were, you, what were you throwing? Uh, I was so in the grass. Um, in the grass, it was a combination. Um, I actually this little grass spot was beautiful. It had grass, really good hydrilla, some of the best I saw all week, and a shell bed. And it was at the mouth of a canal. Mm-hmm. It had it all going on. So in practice, I caught like a three and a half off it on a Carolina rig, and I was catching them kind of all over on a Carolina rig. <laughs> 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 But in a tournament, I caught everything um, on, I caught a couple on a chatterbait and a trap, but for the most part, Michael and I both, day one, day one especially, we both kind of split the load and uh, caught them on a speed worm. Nice. Yeah. Michael was catching them. It did not seem to matter. Yeah. Michael was catching them on a regular uh, red bug, and I was catching them on a magnum watermelon red didn't seem to matter at all yeah day two um and that was it that was that was about what happened on day one um day two it was cloudier a little more overcast the red bug speed worm just never came together for michael i don't know if it was that they couldn't pick up on it the color i have no idea yeah um it's not like he did anything wrong i caught the four and a half on the magnum watermelon red i caught the three and a half on a trap the only nice fish i caught on a trap all week um 
I think we filled out the little ones with like nothing. And when I went in that canal at the end of the day, I li- I mean, I literally fished that canal for 45 minutes and caught like 25 fish. It was yeah. stupid. Everything I caught was on a uh, Biz Sassy Stick in GP Magic. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's yeah. It's a great color. GP Magic is killer. Yeah, it's I love killer. that color. <laughs> it's so good. Especially something about that GP Magic in that like black water. Mm-hmm. The way that like that magic flake kind of. Yeah, the flake. Oh, dude, they like that. They I actually like that. I saw, I had never thrown that color before. Yeah. And then I think it was actually in a Florida tournament, Jake Whitaker was throwing it and was talking about it. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll give this a shot in yeah. Rhode Island because Rhode Island has the same kind of color water as Florida. Yeah. And hmm, they like it. You know where else I got them on GV Magic Stick? Similar watercolor? Similar watercolor. Similar habitat. Similar habitat. Similar mm-hmm. sized bass. You oh, were there. Oh, oh. at uh, Tantee? Yeah. Nice. Throwing GB Magic that day, too. Yeah. It's something, when you get that darker, or maybe it's the Florida, I don't know. You get either Florida bass or darker colored water. If your water looks like Arizona sweet tea. Yes. Throw the GP Magic. Yes. Biz Bates Bates. Biz Bates Biz, Bates. Biz Bates Bates. Oh. Biz Bates soft plastic. Biz Bates Bates. Biz Bates Boots Bots. Yeah. Um, yes. Wow. That's all pretty good. Yeah. It was, it was you know, a fair tournament. I think there was a mix of pre-spawn, post-spawn, spawn fish caught. Less on the spawn, more pre, pre and post. And obviously, and yeah. we'll get into it when we get closer, but we're going to completely switch gears and we're going to yes. go from some record yes. college series bags to oh, probably it, not as record. Just, oh, no. Bassmaster record breaking bags. I mean, you're going to see 50 pound stringers. <laughs> and absurd. <laughs> You're gonna see fifty boats catch the same amount of weight. Yeah, you gonna are. <laughs> You're gonna see fifty boats gonna between be fi- fifty boats tied <laughs> for fiftieth place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's gonna be fifty boats between nine pounds one ounce and nine pounds two ounces. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> It'll be absolutely I hate absurd. To say it. I um, think we're gonna be more accurate on our weight predictions of that one. I think that one. Yeah, I think that one we're gonna be kind of close on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I think Saginaw, now that we've been there, we have a, a better probably, idea. Probably the, the wild card is the lake that no one has ever known. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what. I, I will give you my weight prediction for Norfolk the night before the tournament. <laughs> we'll do a, a podcast. A podcast before? Yeah. Well, hopefully I'm in that freaking tournament. I, we can I do the podcast together. I hope you will be, and I think <clears> you will be. Um, all right. On to the next segment. So, for those of you that don't know, we're big baseball fans. Yeah. So, we're going to yeah. draft the baseball team. For those of you who don't know, there's 10 positions on the baseball team, including the DH. Yeah, American uh, League team. The American League This teams. is American yeah, League yeah. team. We're not it's, no yeah, National no, League. No, National League. No, we don't want pitchers hitting. Come on. One thing in baseball we can agree on, us yeah. too. Although, Atani's fun and fun to watch, but. Yes. Uh, so, we drafted kind of based off personality, kind of based off of just randomness. <laughs> and yes. uh, we don't know each other's teams. We don't know each other's teams. We're going to go in order. Yes. And Around the horn. Oh, yeah. We got to flip. How are we going to flip something? I, I, I mean, we, well, Rock, it's paper, not scissors. really a draft. I think we're just going to go back and forth on just our teams. See, just see. And then at the end of it, I think we could try and create a one our team. master team. A master team. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to go first? You want to start it? I'll, I'll go first. We can go catcher first, catcher. second short, third, outfield, pitcher. I'm going to forget that order, but yes. Uh, catcher catcher i have to go and i'm gonna base some of this off of personality some of it off of just like shape okay oh god <laughs> so uh for it's catcher uh, i got greg hackney oh okay nice, i like it nice big guy behind the plate i like it and usually catchers are a little crazy yes and yes. hackney's got that little crazy vibe i love so that <laughs> i love that i have to go with hackney that's really catcher. good that's really good yeah all right, I, damn. Uh, I, see, that was one of the positions we thought we might match on. Mm-hmm. So I, I, but I think I might like as much as I love mine. <laughs> I might like yours more. Okay. We can talk about this after. I got behind the dish, swindle. <laughs> nice, yeah. Now I'll tell you why. One, he is a he's 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 got Stocky some beef. Guy. Yeah. He's not hacking any beef, but he's got <laughs> beef. And I just got him back there. 
middle of the count, just cracking them, just cracking jokes, just yeah. getting the pit, the yeah. hitter all kinds of all whacked out. And you know what? Swindle's, so, I mean, it either checks out or it doesn't because Swindle has bad knees. <laughs> So it depends on how you look at it. That's fair. That's fair. So maybe young, young Gerald Swindle. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my I catcher. Like that. I like that. What are we going to next? Who you got at the first? At first. Who do I have? All right. I'm picking this one strictly off of looks. Okay. I like, I like that. First base, I had to go Chad Pipkins. Oh. He just looks like a guy that would play first base. Okay. I don't know what it is. And I, I, most people listening to this are probably going to like, what in the world is he talking about? But I feel like each position has a specific look yes, that absolutely. generally falls. And for me, Chad Pipkins fits first base. I could totally see Chad Pipkins <laughs> wearing the baseball sunglasses, yep, stretching. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a vibe. I, I, I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I do like mine, though. Okay. What do you got? I got Jason Christie. Oh, mm, that's an interesting one. I got you going... From jokes behind the dish to first base, the most intimidating man in the world. Yeah. And he's our best hitter. He mashes. He mashes? He mashes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh-uh. All right. What are we going to next here? Second? Yeah. Okay. So I figure each, every baseball team needs a rookie. Okay. There's going to be a new guy. Okay. And for me, the rookie on my team is playing second base. And that's KJ Queen. Okay. Guy, he, he got a very little money in the contract. He's living out of the van behind the field. <laughs> <laughs> and KJ, I know, once again, he's got that second base kind of vibe. He you know? does have second base vibes. <laughs> I give you that. I will give you that. I like that. I like that. What you got? All right. Can you do your shortstop as well? My shortstop? Yes. Uh, and you'll find out why in a second. Okay. Shortstop, I got Patrick Walters. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Patrick Flashy. Walters. Kind of young. Kind of does a lot of cool little things. He's the star. The star. Yeah. The yeah. young up and coming. Like, this guy's going to get a giant contract. Yeah. Kind of basing it off of the Yankees. I'm not going to lie, because you all end up with a good shortstop somehow every time. Um <laughs> But yeah, that, that's that. that's how I ended up on Walters. Okay, all right. So I'm interested to see in our master team what approach we take here. Okay, okay. Because I've got an approach. Okay. To my <laughs> my <laughs> second <laughs> and shortstop. Okay. I'm looking for the best double plays in the league. In the league, just all star sports center top ten. Really, you can't see KJ going to Patty, or the other way around. What about <laughs> Johnston going to Johnston? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> who's well, who's who? Okay. So I've got Corey at second and I've got Chris at short. Reason being, Corey's just going to take care of business. He seems like the more mild mannered, the more serious of the two. Chris is a little more exciting, a little <laughs> more flashy. Little so I want him at short making the flashy grab. Okay. And then turn it to, to Corey, who's just going to take care of business and turn it. I like it. I like it. Okay. So that's what I've got there. I like that. All right, third base. Then we're going to third base. Team. All right, third base. I feel like a lot of baseball teams stick their old guy if he's not hitting material <laughs> at third. It's good. And so I have to go with the oldest of the old. Sorry. Rick Klun. Wow. At third base. <laughs> wow. Been around a long time. Seen a lot of baseballs. Okay. And he's, yeah, he's playing third for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't hate that. So I've got former all-star, guaranteed Hall of Famer, but past his prime. So I'm thinking along the same ill okay, line. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm not saying this is true of him today. I'm just saying his picture gave me these vibes mm -hmm. on Bassmaster. I'm going Greg Hackney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> look, I mean, look at this picture. If that's not a guy who used to play short, <laughs> but is too old and had to move over to the third, he can't move fast enough for short. But he had to move over the third. He still can pick it. He still got the arm. And back in the day, he mashed. But now he's just your solid, you know, two seventy, couple homers. Yeah, a couple <laughs> homers here and there. Maybe a clutch moment. Yeah, exactly. But okay. he's your he's the heart of the team okay. at third. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. Who are we going to now? I love it. Uh, go right. Right field? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's right. I have uh, Taku E2. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to work on some things, but okay. I love it. I got Taku in right. Okay. Um, he's just, you know, he's got the excitement. <laughs> He's the guy that stands out there and is like talking to the fans. He's like throwing baseball with them, you yeah. know, jumping yeah. around, kind of nuts. Yeah, but you also love him too. He's just a, yeah, he's a lovable right fielder. Yeah, so fast. Yes, I've fast. got Taku being fast as well. Okay, but I, but I've got him in left and left. But it interchangeable. 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 Yeah, yeah. Interchangeable. So so Taku on the master team is gonna be in the outfield. Yeah, yeah. So we got you got you. Do. I, I got I got my list on here. We'll okay. we'll, we'll we'll combine. All right. Um, my right fielder though is Steve Kennedy. I almost put him out there. I'm not gonna lie. I swear to God. I've got Steve Kennedy being in right field, being so unathletic. He's a terrible fielder, <laughs> and he doesn't care at all. <laughs> He's just out there. He's out there having a good time, <laughs> but he can hit. He can hit. So we needed to find a spot for him on the team. Okay. And and it's it's right field. Because okay. when he when he puts the effort forth, he can feel. But for the most time he's just having a good time. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Who you got in center? Center? Okay. So I was between two. I okay. figured I had to have a guy that just looked like a baseball player from like the nineties. Okay. <laughs> and I was between like personality and tobacco wise. Mm. I had Brian New. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> but Chris Zaldane with the mustache okay. and the sunglasses looks like a okay. baseball player. I like He's it. probably the only one on the list where I'm like, he probably played baseball at some point. Which okay. I'm, I highly doubt Chris Zaldane actually did play baseball, but he looks like it. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I think I'm going to go Zaldane. Okay. I like it. I yeah. like it. I like either pick, but I like Zaldane. Yeah. Brian knew. I feel like if you're putting him in center, he's he's an absolute mess. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, he's so good. That's how I see him yeah. in center field. Yeah, yeah. So my center fielder, I'm going. In, I'm taking an interesting approach here. I'm going. My center fielder at one point in time was like fast mm -hmm. and just skill, talent, all talent. But since then, it, this is reflective of his fishing career as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, all talent, just a good average hitter. Yeah. You know, great player. But since then, he hasn't hit as much for power. He can still be, you know, beat it around a little bit. But now he's older. He relies a lot on his baseball IQ, his mm -hmm. smarts, where the ball's going to go, how to run a route to the ball. And he's still fast. I'm going Mike Iconelli. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I knew you were going to pick Ike at some point. I had, had to, to put him somewhere. <laughs> I had to put him somewhere. Also, Ike, welcome back to the Elite Series. Yes. Buddy. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited to watch him fish. Okay. We're like that. And I like actually that. care. All right. Oh, shots fired or nothing. For left field, I feel like every team needs someone that's a little stuck up. He's really good. Knows he's really good. Oh. But he's all about the name. Oh. He's flashy. Oh. And for that reason, left field, I have John Cruz. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I thought long and hard about that. I kind of like your reasoning there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And you have Taku, right? I have Taku. All right. Who are we going to next? Um, we, here? we can go pitcher or DH. Let's go DH. I like DH next, too. Okay. See... I was on the same mindset, but because of the bad knees, I got uh, Swindle as DH. I'm also thinking about the Red Sox. Like, Ortiz was such a big personality and was DH for Red Sox for so long. And Swindle, once again, big personality. Yeah. Fans love him. Yeah. I'm sticking him in the DH spot. I, I like feel it. like same reason he can knock him out of the park. So. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. I like it a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his knees are so bad, he's going to have a Kirk Gibson run around the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone else is going to be running for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. So, my DH, <laughs> he can't play the field. Yeah. 
He's got incredible power. Uh-huh. When he gets a hold, it's gone. But he 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 bats like one ninety two. So he's he's going to be my eight hitter. Mm-hmm. He's not a good hitter, but when he gets one, it's gone. And the reason why he's on the team is because of the morale he brings. <laughs> he's the clubhouse leader, Matt Robertson. <laughs> he's he's eccentric. He's getting the guys going when we're on offense. And every once in a while, he hits the big one. He hits the big one. Yeah. I like that, but too. But he can't play the field worth his shit. I like that, too. We <laughs> <laughs> okay. got on the mound. So, on the mound. This is big. For those who don't know, pitchers are usually the craziest people on the team. This is true. Especially starting ones that are good. It doesn't seem to matter who it is. They got a little craziness. Something's wrong with them. Yeah. And so, for that reason, I had two people. I was okay. between Matt Robinson. Okay. Once again, long hair. Looks like he's from California. That's a mound. That's a mound all day. That's a mound presence. Yeah, mound presence. <laughs> and then once again, I had to go long hair, crazy mustache, that's fire. Interesting. So you, interesting, mm. interesting, interesting. I think we've got two different types of pitchers. I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> so my pitcher, I agree with you. Which, by the way, I'm going with fighter. Okay, fighter it is. I've got so I've got like the the different type of pitcher. Mm-hmm. Still crazy, still crazy. You always need the crazy. But one of them pitchers who stands like a like a Mike Messina type stands Andy Pettit type stands on the mound, no emotion, just delivers it to you. But he's a kook. Mm-hmm. He won't let you know at first, but he's a kook, and something about his build. Just gives me the most pitcher vibes. With Patrick Walters. See, I thought about putting Walters there. Yeah. But I was going for the crazy and I was really leaning into it. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I love, I love your guys. It's interesting. You asked me if we're doing relief pitchers. I love your guys for relief pitchers. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. why I asked. Cause I was <laughs> like, I really want both. Yeah. And I was like, I put Robertson as a relief pitcher all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we compromise there for the master team. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I I say we'll come up with a master, but first, uh, and we, we won't. This is too much work to figure this out. What's your order? What's your batting order? Mm. Uh, Just go down. I'm going to go KJ. Okay. I'm going to go KJ, then I'm going to go, I'm going to go Clon. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Clon. <laughs> okay. Patrick Walters. Um, I'm going to go Swindle. I'm going to go... Sal Dane. Okay. Edu. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. I can't believe we're doing this. I love it. Pipkins. No, nah, I'm sorry. Pipkins last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Cruz and then Pipkins. I think okay. that was everyone. Okay. I got Taku fast, <laughs> fast, fast. <laughs> he's going to get on base. He's fast. Christy mashes. Kennedy mashes. Hackney used to mash. <laughs> Swindle. You got him batting fourth? Yeah. He he used to mash, but he's still, he still knocks it around. Like he went from perennial all-star to above average hitter. Okay. That was his step down. Okay. Swindle. Because if anyone gets on Swindles, he's putting one. He's parking one. Yeah. <laughs> then I got the Johnsons. I think they both suck. <laughs> they both can't I got hit. them both not hitting for shit. Okay. Then I got Robertson who hits worse than them. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, because my bottom half of the order is so bad, I had to put Ike at nine because he's a good hitter. Yeah. He's like a second lead off. So if by chance any of these guys get on, we don't have an insta out in the nine spot. <laughs> <laughs> See, I put Clun because I'm like, 
You know, he probably can't hit him, <laughs> but I feel like he's a consistent, like, gets on the first. Yeah. Like, maybe if he, like, <laughs> makes it the first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's the order I'm going with. <clears throat> that was fun. Yeah. So, what's the master? We got we to make it quick. We got, what, what do we got? Like, 15 minutes. What do we both agree on? Taku. All right, Taku's <laughs> definitely going in the outfield. You want him in right left or left? Or right, I don't care. Okay, who do you have in where? I have Cruz and left field for me. Cruz and left. Um, I like Taku and left. All right. Because I feel like he's fast and there's going to be more balls coming to left. All right. And I also then. feel like you need a stronger arm. I don't know where you need a stronger arm from. Right or left, you need a stronger arm. I thought right was always the one that you wanted the stronger arm yeah, for. Yeah, so even more so. I don't think Taku has a strong arm. Okay, all right, so put him in left. <laughs> I think his his skill is his speed and the fact that he can track any ball down. But as far as getting guys out, he... Mm-mm. Okay, so we both had Swindle and Hackney. Yes. I had Swindle as DH. I have... Okay. And Hackney as catcher. I've got Hackney as third... And Swindle as catcher. I, l- I like your Hackney as third more than my Clun is third. Okay. And I like your Swindle as DH. <laughs> okay. So why don't we do Hackney third, Swindle DH? All right. Yeah, I like that. And then doesn't that put our catcher into play? Who is your catcher? Oh, your catcher was Swindle. Yes. Then we don't have a catcher. We don't have a catcher. No, <laughs> we have to figure that out. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, how do we put? I got I I like Christy behind the dish. Mean, yeah, I like Christy behind the mean, dish. Tough, yeah, tough and mean. Yeah, put Christy behind. The yeah, plate. yeah, yeah. Christy goes behind the plate for sure. Yeah, I like that. I almost put Christy as catcher, but then I saw Hackney and I was like, Yeah, big. I like him. You've got Pipkins at first. Pipkins at first, just based off the fact that he looks like he belongs at first. <laughs> he can't hit. <laughs> he can't hit with shit. Okay, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's have- good because we remove the weakness of Robertson from the lineup <laughs> and we insert the weakness of Pipkins. <laughs> Pipkins <is that. laughs> now, what were your second and short? Because short was Patrick Walters. Okay. Second was KJ based off the fact that he's a rookie. I really That's like I like KJ a lot at short mm-hmm. at second, but something about me really wants Patrick as the starting as pitcher. the starting pitcher. And <laughs> oh god, I got it. We got <laughs> we got this is this is it. <laughs> Walters starts okay. Middle relief Robertson yeah. And closing close the game out with fire. fire. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we do. All right, so second, we got Queen. We got shortstop. Oh, hold on. SP. Then we get, <laughs> hold on. We have a SP, RP, and we have closer. a closer. So we've got Walters. That way we could fit in all our pitchers. I like that. Robertson. Robertson comes in and just throws gas. Yeah. And it you have no idea where it's going. Oh, absolutely not. If you like the guy that would throw like a knuckleball and then follow it up with like a 90 mile yeah. an hour fastball. Yeah. And then Fighter comes in and throws just looking crazy. nothing over 90, but every pitch is junk. Yeah. <laughs> junk. Absolute insane cur- curveballs and stuff. Yeah. All right. So now we got a problem in short. Well, short we could put. You had uh, Chris Johnson. I did, but I I can't have one Johnston, not the other. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I mean, I got. I think uh, who's who's. Do we move Ike? Who do you have as center? Center, I have Zaldane. Okay, because he looks like a baseball player. <laughs> That's literally the only reason. <laughs> and he's got the tobacco. Yeah, I well, knew had the tobacco. Something about me loves new and <laughs> Can we go new and center? We can go new and center. Okay. <laughs> and can we do Ike at short? Ike to KJ or oh, we all to young Carolina boys for the connection for the double play. We go new to Queen on the Ooh. double play. Yeah, I mean, as long as we got a guy that 
uses a lot of tobacco. I feel like every baseball team has that too. Yeah. I there's a part of me that see there's a part of me that likes new as the, the shortstop's got to be the star of the team though. And Brian New is, is just he's not who you want your kid looking up to, I feel like as a baseball no, player. Probably not. You no, that's not, that's not, I'm, Brian New, that's not a shot at you. I'm <laughs> saying baseball player version of you is is not a role model. We got canceled by all the Brian New we fans. Did, we did. We um, love Brian New. We well, love if we Brian KJ at short then. He's young. Okay. People, guys are starting to aspire to be him. Okay. And then we put New at second. Or we keep... Okay, I, I think I got it. Tell me what you think about this. We keep New in center. New in center. I like New in center. We put Ike in right. Power outfield. Taku, Ike, and New. I mean, that's star power. And then we go KJ to former Bethel teammate Cody Huff. Ooh. Wait, what, who do we have right now? And Huff is the... KJ is the sophomore, right? And Huff is the rookie. So we're dropping... Star, absolute star prospect. We're dropping Kennedy and Cruz then. Yeah. Okay, okay. What do you think of that? I could live with it. I could live with it. You got, you got like... Cody Huff is like the star young yeah. second baseman. Yeah, just like he is right now. Kind of like college guys. Yeah. Like Whereas Huff. his his college teammate has already proven it. <laughs> KJ Queen. I like it. Okay. Okay. I like it. We'll do it. So right field we have Ike. Are we doing Ike? Yeah. Ike's got to be on the baseball team. Okay. Okay. So that's that's, our that's team? the team. All right. Review it for everyone. Okay. Behind the dish, Jason Christie. Mm -hmm. Mean. Mean. Tough. Tough. Gonna hit. <laughs> <laughs> First base. Chad Bipkins. Because he looks like he should be there <laughs> and plays hit. like he shouldn't. <laughs> he can't hit <laughs> Vacuum cleaner. If you throw it near him, he's picking it. But he can't he hit. Can hit. He can't hit. <laughs> Cody and KJ up the middle. Just the... the the young guns. You got some young blood. Oh, I like this too with Hackney at third. Yeah, then you got the old guy. Yeah, you at got third. the old guy, at third. old guy at third. I really like that. <laughs> oh, I love this too. <laughs> we got Ike and right, new and center, Taku and left. I like it. Yep. I like Solid. it. Solid. You got a mix of you got speed, old, you got power, speed. Pa yeah, you got it all. You got it all in the outfield. Personality. D H Swindle. He used to be a catcher, but now his knees don't work. <laughs> his knees don't work, so he's DH. So he's DH, and he's still hitting. We got Patrick Walters with that with that weirdness to him, but that stature at starting it's pitcher. Very consistent. He's very setting consistent. the tone. He's he's live scoping, <laughs> live scoping to the plate. Yeah, and then we've got just psychopaths Robertson and Fighter in the bullpen. Absolute. Fighter comes up. He's got a crazy stance. Guys are like, is this guy going to throw the ball at me? Yeah. <laughs> so I expect to get beamed right now. Yeah. And then he throws it over the plate, and you don't even You don't know it. how it got there. Yeah, yeah, like what in the world? Yeah. And he, it, he comes behind the guy who just threw 840 miles an hour. Yeah. And yeah. you had no idea and where like it was going. It was the craziest post-game interview you ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Great team. I think we're going to the World Series. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, that was fun. It was fun. We might have to do that with MLF. We do. I think we definitely do. <laughs> I think we have to do it with MLF. We definitely do. That was way too much fun. <laughs> oh, shit. All righty. Well, I think uh, a little preview for next week before we, we close out. Yeah. Or next episode, if it's next week or not. Um, Actually, we could probably make it work next week. Let me pull up something real quick. Uh, side pot fishing. Our buddy. Luke Schrader, MPFL Pro. I don't know if he's fishing that this year or not. We're gonna have to. We're gonna get him on, and we're gonna talk about side pot fishing. This is his new business thingamajigger venture. venture. That's the word that I want to use. I said thingamajigger. Um, go ahead and follow the Instagram account. I think it's really exciting. I don't even think I've told you I'm about this. I'm going to it right now. Yeah. So basically, his idea, and we're gonna get all the details from him. So I'm just gonna give you the the basis of it. You've all fished, we've all fished wildcat tournaments. In every wildcat tournament, there's a $10, ooh, I'm burping. 
It's a $10 or a $20 side pot, right? Mm -hmm. Luke's idea is to take his company and be the side pot for nationwide tournaments. So basically, if you want to buy in, you're feeling good, or you just like buying in the side pot, you put in a little extra money on top of your entry fee, you got the chance to win a ton more. So I think it's a really cool idea. Um, he wants to come on and talk to about it. Talk That's to us a about cool it. idea. Right? I love it. He wants to talk to us about it. Um, I think you guys, it would really be a cool thing for you listening. And please give him a follow. Um, I am a huge supporter. I, I Look, full transparency. Um, I love what Luke's doing with this. I love Luke as a person. And I think this is an excellent idea. But it's an idea that needs traction to work. Mm-hmm. So he's got it for BFL's Opens Toyota Series. We talked a little about college series. Not really sure about the logistics of that. But um, give him a follow. Uh, we're going to have him on next week, I think, or next episode. And we're going to talk to him about it. Maybe go a little bit more in depth. And, uh, yeah, shoot him a follow. The Instagram handle is no spaces, no under. Well, there, you can't have a space in an Instagram handle. Uh, no dashes, dots, no nothing. It is simply side pot fishing. That's S I D E P O T fishing side pot fishing. Give it a follow. Um, check out the website. It's awesome stuff. I mean, here, just a real quick thing before we, we sign off here. Mm -hmm. His, his breakdown. This is boater and co angler, by the way, um, for, for just a BFL, it'd be an extra hundred bucks. You jump in his side pot. And if there are a hundred people in the tournament, the first side pot gets four grand. I think BFLs as it is pay out about, four grand yeah so like so you double your double money winning for like less than half of your entry fee yeah that's awesome that is awesome so uh excited to talk to luke about that and uh yeah i like it good stuff fun episode yeah we appreciate everyone tuning in hope you all had fun like we did Heck um yeah. let us know what you think about our team yeah let us know if you think our team's going to the world series or if we're <laughs> uh well for the the Orioles. The Orioles. There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> Sorry, Orioles. Fans. I was going to go Diamondbacks, but that works too. <laughs> Fair enough. Both work. <laughs> no, no. We're a, uh, we're a, uh, we're American League team. Orioles. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. There we go. That's the side right there. All righty. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next time. Hasta la vista. Bye.